Let's say with us, let's say with me, the, the team of this first message. Let's go. Before enemy, now friend. Say it with me. Before enemy, now friend. The sisters. You can read like this with the sisters. Before enemies, now friends. Lord Jesus. We are in a moment that we that has been the best moment of our lives. The church life has brought to us not just joy, of course, we are really happy and the proof is it's here in the meetings, but the church life has brought to us happiness. Are you, uh, aren't you happy? Because before we we met the Lord, we were enemies of God. But one day, we met the Lord and we became their, His friend. Many times we think that being God's friend it's for God to help us, isn't it? Oh, I'm a friend of God because everything that I want, He does it. I'm a friend of God because He gives me a lot of good things. But in this conference, we're learning that being God's friend, it's to know His heart. The heart of our friend. Who's your friend? We sang today, right? I found a great friend. Jesus, my Savior. If he's your friend, you need to know him more and more. And first, to know his heart. You need to know the heart of your friend so you may do his will. You realize that sometimes, a lot of times, we just want God to do. And that's when we call God our friend. Now we're understanding that being God's friend, it's to walk so, so close to him. That we know his will and not just know. But we can practice the, His will. But how can you know His will when He speaks? It's through His word that we're able to know and execute and practice the word of His word, and we become His friends. In the Gospel of John, that we've, this whole semester we've been enjoying, and not the Lord, it's saying to us, who has an ear here. But in the Gospel of John, there's a story. There's two stories that I want to talk to you here. That is in chapter 8, in chapter 9 of John. The first one is the story of the woman. The other one, is the story of the blind men. Who were them? They were people. That they walked according to what they thought. 
and we were also blinded because we couldn't see what God has prepared and He wanted to come with us. Thanks to the Lord that today I see here, not just a gathering of, of teens, but we see here an army. You were his enemy and now you became his friend to be part of this army. John chapter 8, from chapter 1 it says, But Jesus went to the Mount of the Olive. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down. He taught them. I just want you to pay attention here in this word, taught, to teach. In the original, it's didactic. It remembers the word in Portuguese. But here it says, in the dictionary, that says that this didact is not just transmission of knowledge, but is direction is a word of command that is we've been enjoying today and so the lord jesus here in in chapter 2 in verse 2 is the same one as it is in acts 2 20, uh, 42 where the church they enjoyed in one accord the teaching of the apostles Peter, the, the leader of the apostle, he will speak and the church will follow that direction. So this teaching of Jesus here has the same characteristic, which is the word, prophetic word, living prophetic word in the midst of them. So here verse 3 says, Then the scribes, oops, sorry. Verse 3 says, Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery and when they had sat her in the midst they say to him teacher this woman was caught in adultery in a very act verse 5 says now moses in the lord command us that such will be stoned but why do you say pay attention this woman it wasn't the first one that was caught in adultery. The Bible doesn't says this, but many other women, they were stoned in death. And they used the law to do this. But in this case, specific case, what did they want it to do? That it wasn't just to kill the woman. It wasn't just to... Ex ex uh, What they wanted to do here, it was to test the prophetic word. They wanted to go against the teaching. What the Lord Jesus, that the Lord Jesus brought with, with the purpose of edificating the church. Here they wanted to go against the desire of the Father that was being executed by the Son. Today, the same thing happens. It goes against. The, the, it, was, it wasn't just because of the woman she sinned. It wasn't just because the woman was caught in adultery. It wasn't just because the law says that she should die. It was to Jesus for him because he was doing God's will. So yesterday we heard here, Brother Pedro said that we were gained by the Lord to be his servant. Imagine, here you came here to try to understand and practice that you're just a servant. Me and you, we are not more than a servant. 
a servant does the will of his master. How can we know the will of the Father? Can someone say this? Uh, answer me. Okay, really good. So, through the word. But the, the Bible, 66 books, is, is the word of God, right? There's a lot of teachings. Through, about everything that you may think the Bible teaches. But there was one teaching that will make the church prosper in Acts chapter 2. And today, there's one teaching that makes the church prosper and makes us know God's will to make us useful. Which is, what is this teaching? The prophetic word. But in the sequence here, in verse number 10 of John 8, it says, of course, Jesus, he, he brought light to this situation. Those men that they wanted to use the law to kill the woman and go against the Lord, they left the, the stones. It wasn't something so important. And the Bible says that from the oldest one, they wanted to they start to go out. They were exposed by the light. When you're doing immersion in the prophetic word, you're not exposed by the, exposed by the light. But if you're exposed by the light, receive it. In the refined immersion, you receive that light. What happens to you? God fills you. And those men here, they, were, they didn't want it to be filled by God. So they went out. We are exposed by the light. And when we are exposed by the, by the light, we receive it. We receive what God wants to talk to us through the prophetic word. And this fills us with himself. So in verse 10, he asked the woman. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw nowhere but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. So what happened here is that everyone, they were exposed by the word. Everyone was exposed, exposed by the light that the prophetic word as Jesus himself that was in the midst of them but when exposed, some, they just prefer to go out. The, those who have a heart of a servant, even though they're being exposed, they prefer to stay, to be filled with God, to be filled with the word. So that woman, she, she stayed and the Lord gave to her a way. Go and sin no more. Me and you, when we receive the prophetic word, we receive also a way. And this way makes us walk with uh, with assurance. So I was just sharing with the brothers downstairs that we came here this time in a main event. Eight brothers. A really comfortable trip. We stopped in the in the in the church meetings, some places that the youth and teenagers they're with the book Espo in the street. And when they entered when they entered to the meeting place, I thought that they were gonna get there, you know, tired. It was already ten PM. So they they were the whole day serving working because a servant just works serves they spend the day working so i was like okay they were gonna get here tired really tired with uh hungry probably yes but they got there doing war cries a servant 
his reward is that he's being filled with God himself, which is the word. And so what do we need? It's for us to be filled. And for us to be filled, God has to give, God gave us a lot of tools. And between them, the immersion has made a difference, tremendous difference in each one of us. The immersion, the explosive immersion, the refined immersion. We need to do immersion because this immersion will fill us with Christ. When the Lord gave this way for the woman, go and sin no more. He didn't stay just giving uh, some rules of conduct. You know why he didn't? Explain to the woman, woman, oh, you cannot do this, you cannot do that. Oh, be careful so you don't do this anymore. He didn't did this because he believed that by doing God's will, he could be feel he could feel this woman, and this woman will never sin no more. You know what the Lord wants to do with you, to fill you with the His word, to never, not me, not you, to sin. So is the prophetic word that does this work. And God's friend, he practices the word, not just understands, but of course, what we enjoyed, what we planned, we programmed to talk to you, to do activities. They were about, you know, these messages, recent actual messages. But if here I'm trying to, to pass my message, I'm going to be passing the message, a uh, wrong message. Forget someone's message. What we're doing here is just transmitting as, a, as messengers the prophetic word given by God himself through our brother. So what do we need is to take this word because this word is the one that did the work in the woman is this word that is going to be doing the work in you and in me for us to be totally gained by the Lord to bring the Lord back. So in chapter nine, the yeah, another experience, it's on a verse, chapter nine, verse from one to 16. So it was a blind man. And it was someone that he was born blind. He never said, he never saw light. He never saw color. He never saw anything. And from the verse 1, chapter 9. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And look at this characteristic. He's not enjoying who's not understanding what God wants to do, who's not understanding that the word, it's in the midst of them, which is the case of Jesus. And today for us is the prophetic word. So they just start to be, be questioning. Verse two, he said, and his disciples asked him saying, Ravi, who sinned this man or his parents, that he was born blind. So when you have a mind, just for knowledge, something happens and you just want to know. Oh, it was because of this or because of that, that happened. You need to have a proof of why it happens. They wanted to know, oh, but it was because of his sin or it was his parents. So natural men always, always, wants to to have the proof of wanting to understand to practice but our phrase here is different we need to practice to understand it's not just to believe to practice but it's to practice to believe that's why we cannot be stopped 
to understanding. Look, I, 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 I like this phrase. You're in a certain situation, in the church, live, enjoying, and then a burden comes. And you're like, wait a second. You understand? Look, like a, a step back. Wait a minute. And in while some, they're not even they're not even worried about understanding. They're one step ahead, practicing. The other says, "No, wait a minute. Let me see if it works." Thanks to the Lord for this generation that does not do, do this. Thanks to the Lord, this generation that when they hear something, they make a step ahead, and they practice. So another thing that I was saying to the brothers, through the part, the those who are participating here between 11 and 17 years old, when the Lord said uh, Psalms 110, this revelation, so strong, a period of the pandemic that we were locked in our houses, and the Lord said to us, through the brother Pedro, he said, Psalms 110 and verse 3, that one army will come of holy youth and that army will come to crown the will of God executed by the Father, by the Son. And he will give it to the Son as holy, holy ornaments. And for you here to be participating, You know how old were you when that happened? You were seven years old. The older ones. But God, he prophesied for you that through you, this huge army will be formed to bring the Lord back. Who wants to bring the Lord back? Say, say amen. And so to bring the Lord back, we are his army. That does not question. That doesn't say, oh, I have to ask this, I have to see this, if it's this way. This army has the desire of hearing the word and practicing it. Yesterday, at night, Brother Pedro sat here. The teenagers of the full-time House of Teens in John Pizzo, Brazil, and they stopped, and when they, they were coming, they stopped on a first And a woman, she entered, and they approached her. Oh, hey, can I pray for you? And she said, just give me a second. I'm going to go in the pharmacy, and I'll go back. You already had this experience? Or you think, like, oh, she, she's not coming back. Did it happen to you? I had a lot. Of, a lot. But this woman, she came back. The sister came back, and they prayed for her. She said, Five years ago, I was in the church life, and I left. I don't church anymore. But today, through you, I see that God. And then, brothers. She went with the, to the house of teens. And the brother, oh, now, oh, when I was so far, but now it's here. And she said, I'm going to go back to the meetings. But there's a detail. But Peter has said to us, no, about the, the kingdom is the investors. Are you participating in kingdom investors? 
push the knot and want to raise your hand. You can also participate in the quotas because this sister, without even knowing about anything about Kingdom Investor, she didn't know anything. So she offered 500 red eyes. Is the value of She is an investor of the kingdom. Who does this if it's not the prophetic words? And even more, Brother Pedro said to us about a challenge. Who like the challenge about having more brothers, doubling the number of brothers? Let us go with this focus. To double the number of brothers in the church life in my city. And this sister that was approached yesterday in the pharmacy, she offered, she also said this, Sunday, which is tomorrow, I'm going to come to the meeting and I will bring my sister. She herself is going to practice the common teacher and we'll have more brothers in the church in John. So, and it happens to the whole earth. You have doubts that in July 2005, with the double of brothers, it will. God, he has, he has, he, he has, he has you. And going back to the story of this, of the blind man, he said, the Lord says, neither this man or his parents sin, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must go, I must work the works of him who sent me while it's the day. The night is coming and no one can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the world. When he has said these things, he may play with the saliva. You know what this represents? The word, prophetic word. He anointed the eyes of the blind with clay. He has a full of Siloam. He went and washed and came. So realize, first thing that happened in the in the life of this blind man, it was the word came out of God of the Lord of God's mind. When the, when the word comes out, now we need to have the certain. That's why the Lord said, go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent one. But uh, something similar between this one and the blind man. It was that those men who took the woman, they wanted just to test the one sent by God. Man, they're not really worried of what's going to happen. They're not really worried. Of what's going to happen to these people. They're just worried about attacking the same one. That's why in the case of the blind, the Lord says, go to the sent. And the Bible finishes saying, we went, we came back see. Finish the story of the blind men. Those men here, they started to ask questions for the, for the, for the blind men. Asking one thing and then the other. And then they started to speak right about Jesus. Because they say, oh no, he's a sinner. How can that sinner can spit on the, on, the, on the ground and put clay on your eyes? And he sent you to the pool and you're going to come back seen? And question in a lot of ways. This blind man. And then on the verse 25 of chapter 9, the blind man says, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. Verse 
And he continues. One thing I know that I was blind, now I see. You know what we were? We were blind. And today we're walking in the church life. We have like a, a strong experience with God. And I'm talking about teenagers, okay? But also my age and to more or less. The strong experience has reached you. And the Lord says, go and wash the pool of Siloam. And we were, and now we are seeing. This meeting is a meeting of God's friends that comes, comes back seeing. You need to come back seeing that the Lord, had, what the Lord has done. Because it, this is what depends the life of the, of the servant, of the friend. A servant has a lot to do. He wants to do the will of the Father. And it becomes friends of the Lord because he's able to know the heart of his Lord. And when they know their heart, through the word that he speaks, you become his friends. And from then, as friends of God, you can see all the will, all the plan of God for us to be executed. Yesterday, Brother Pedro talked about uh, a war of kingdom. In this war, there's two sides. <laughs> Why does Satan is called this word Satan? Who knows? No one knows? It means adversary. She's teen, 10 years old. She's a pre, pre teen. She's 10 years old and she knows that the word Satan it means adversary. So this kingdom, it emerged against the kingdom of God because he wanted to be as God, same as God. And he became an enemy. And what God is doing with us is because, uh, making his friends. And on the other hand, on the other kingdom, there's the enemies. Lead, their leader by Satan. And then I related some words that we need to choose. The, the, the choice is yours. Truth or light? The, the choice is yours. The enemy of God, the adversary of God, he was never firm on truth. Because he's the father of lies. And my living today cannot be a living of... Uh, the, the, an appearance. Now that we're the army of the Lord, we're here. Not as an actor, but as a soldier. So those who choose to be those soldiers... That fight in the in the army of God. So if you want to choose truth and life, you will choose the truth. Blindness or light. What do you want? So where do we find this clear light? What word? Brothers. The prophetic word has been our GPS, our guide. Why does the teenagers are having this fire? Wild fire. Because they know exactly where they came from. 
sabem they know the path that they're walking and they know where they're going to get the prophetic word is our gps spiritual gps but Pedro has showed to us this whole way that it was made even before the, the, the messages, the, the way, the path of the church life, showing that the path that me and you, even though we weren't born, we were there. It's part of our story. But now we're in this face that has the little arrow. There's way back. And there in the GPS there's a little arrow. It's it's the blue arrow, right? And it's it's the way for you to go forward. And now the prophetic word putting this arrow taking us ahead. And showing even more how many kilometers miles, how many hours it's missing for us to get to the destiny. With Christ, we will get to the end. So this GPS will take us to the right place, which is to fulfill God's plan, which is the edification of the church. And immersion point one is about the edification. And to edify, we need to be in love for this life that the Lord gave to us. Are you in love? Are you in love? In love, hello. In love for the way that the Lord gave to us to bring the Lord back. Another word that I related here, human teachings of behavior or prophetic words. The teachings are good, isn't it? But a lot of times, it makes us to go in the desert. That prophetic word is, is it guides us. Besides, I want to tell a history, a story here. There was uh, this youth that he went to a difficult situation. His photo and uh, in, in, uh, before and his photo on the half of teens. I participated and he gave this testimony that many times he will get to uh, from his school and he will put, he went to the room and for him to have lunch. She wanted to put she, her mom, she needed to put the, the plate under the door. And he opened the door, took the plate, closed the door, ate, and then he put the plate on the door. And the photo that he sent to us, it was him on a bed, crying. and today his photo. It's him in the street praying for people. But I think that we... I think he, he went through a, a lot of handbook and rules to change. No. Because they try a lot of times. And what took him out of situ at that situation, you know what it was? To enjoy the prophetic word. So something happened. He was in GPC in January. And then I went to the GPC to grab some books and some boxes to give to the co-fathers. Then the brothers said to me, they got the boxes and everything. I was his box. They said that it was to give to some Chico Se. Oh, you can put it there and then I'll tell him. He was so, you know, he didn't even knew people. 
He, he said, some Chico say I need to give it to. I'm talking about this because he gave his, the testimony himself to the church in Jumpe. So, you know what is this, brothers? The prophetic word. It's working in the youth, in the teenagers, and in us. Until it makes us with clarity to the teachings of the Lord to edify, build up the church. You hear, of course, more than the, the, those who are working on the internet are those in the army. They're being infused by the prophetic word. And this has made a string different. He sent an audio with the photo. But if you know him, I didn't know him before. And to hear him. And he didn't went to any school. A coach. A place where he could learn some rules of behavior. And this kid that in the in the school that he studies is one of the references a model who does this the prophetic word my time is finishing today the lord in the midst of us realizing some uh, healing of teenagers that they're not more in them in our midst and he said they said that some are in, in depression because they want someone to talk to them they, they, they want to be with the young young one so I have an explanation for it. Because we're with fire and vigor. The prophetic word it, it heals. And the prophetic word will heal you too. He will heal you. So us, and we're having this opportunity of being this army Do not waste this chance. But let us be comfort. What the Lord wants to do today. The church that you go to. It has teenagers? Let's change the question. Who's here? In the church that you're going to, the city where you live, it doesn't have has a team. A few, but there's some. Let us follow the, the what the Lord Peter said here, what the brother Peter said here. In your city, you're gonna have has a team in your city, but the Lord wants to count on you. If you go out of here, of this conference, with the desire, with this will decided, of filling the prophetic word, it will happen to your city and your church too. Because what we need is to practice to believe. That's why we want to direction the word of command. Let us have house of team in all the cities and all the church. In the church that already has, let's go to the to the cities right next to you or neighbor cities in the, in the, in the neighbor in their neighborhoods. Let's go with this 
wildfires of the prophetic word everywhere. Because the prophetic word is the one that establishes the kingdom of God on this earth. And you, practicing the prophetic word, will have part on this story. You will be God's friend that makes what he wants. Jesus is our Lord.